Hey, how's it going, Phil? Hey, what's up, Andy? Not Good too much. Andy. Actually, we got a lot going on today. We got a busy, busy week getting prepared for all this stuff that we launched just a little bit ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm get all to excited about about to hear about it. Yeah, you, you know all about it, but we got to tell everybody else about it finally. We've been working on this project for a long time. Today, we have launched the, well, yesterday, we launched officially the Lumineer QAV Pro Cinema Series. So this is uh, two different frames that launched, a small one and a bigger one, and we have more stuff coming down the pipeline. But today, we want to talk about the QV Pro Micro Whoop and the new QV Pro Whoop, the five-inch one, and uh, give you guys a little bit of backstory of how these got designed, why they, why they uh, exist, and uh, how Phil and his team at Cinequads helped us make that come, come to life and uh it's available now for purchase on getfpv.com right now, and it's, we're really excited to finally be able to share that with you guys. So, Phil, why don't we get started real quick with uh, the frames themselves. Which one do you want to start with? you want to start with the little one or the big one? You pick. All right. Maybe we'll start with both because I want to I want to say what made you want to have this product even exist? Like, what are, what are you doing today that you were thinking, man, I wish I had a frame that did this that wasn't available in the market, you know? Yeah, like three years ago, three and a half years ago now, we um, founded our company Cinequads. Oh, maybe I should turn the other way around. Um, yeah, and we are a professional um, cinematography, FPV production company out of Germany. And we do a lot of commercials, movies, and all that kind of stuff. So uh, actually, a year ago, we started with the designing of the version one of my favorite frame, the QAV Cine back then. And uh, we've been all hyped about the Naked GoPro and we just want to put it in a protected frame, but needs to be super stiff. So that's why we came up with this frame originally like one year ago. And now we just uh, launched the micro version of it in the QV Pro line. And we have all the new updates. I don't know, maybe Andy, you want to point them out real quick. So we yeah, made we this frame. It was already good, but we just made it better because we're so happy with it and it's an absolute workhorse. Yeah, absolutely. The, I mean, the first frame, like you said, it, it was very popular. It, it did a great job for what it was, a micro two and a half inch <coughs> prop guarded frame. And uh, this one has become one of the, I'd say the standards for anybody that needs like a micro, you know, whoop uh, at a professional level. Level. So now what we've done here with the new series called QV Pro, this frame got a refresh uh, into a few new features that the first one didn't have and some quality en enhancements uh, that also paired it nicely with the new larger one uh, to be part of the QV Pro family. So if you look at this little one, to start with that one, a few features that uh, we can highlight. Let me put on my overhead cam here. So first off, I think something that you had noticed compared to the original is the carbon fiber itself. So we went like all out with the quality of the carbon. We had, we told our manufacturer, let's, what, what can we have if we want the best carbon fiber you can get? So we, we actually imported sheets of Japanese carbon fiber. We also did our own custom layup for the sheets. Uh, that's called quasi isotropic uh, layup, meaning instead of a zero 90 weave that you would normally find in carbon fiber, that works pretty great on uh, straight parts. Like if it's a straight arm or a body plate that you can control how you cut it. But when you talk about a design that has circular cuts where you can't control where the weave is going to be at all angles, the quasi isotropic really shines because what it means is you have <clears throat> symmetrical strength, no matter which angle the carbon is kind of cut at. So, you're not going to have a weak point or a failure point in your carbon fiber that you might on a 090 weave where it's really strong when you get down the weave of of the of the strand of carbon but uh, or fiber but if you go off you know 45 degrees it's actually very weak uh, in comparison so by doing the quasi isotropic it allows it to be uniformly strong across all angles uh, that just gives a, a better overall uh, result for a frame design like this that's using a single plate of carbon that's cut out because you're really just two plates of carbon here sandwiched, uh, but it works very well to make it lightweight, but still very structural, structural and strong. The other thing you'll notice is like the finish. It's got this really smooth matte finish that looks great uh, and professional, I'd say. And then everything else is kind of blacked out. So the standoffs are now black. Everything's blacked out to kind of give more of this cinematography professional feel. Uh, that the previous one had some more some more color 
to it. Uh, the motors that are paired with it that we designed for this frame, 1404 motors, they're all black too, uh, the new Zip V2. So it's a really cool looking frame, I'd say. Uh, the other feature that you, you may notice is on the front here, this is the new GoPro mount uh, or HD camera mount. So this is integrated into the frame design now. Uh, I have one here that's not fully built, you can see a little bit, but yeah, it's this is essentially a 3D print, but it's custom designed for this frame and we have custom cutouts that make it kind of just snap right in place. It's held with just one screw, which makes it very simple to add or remove. Uh, the other cool feature is we have it on the front. So you simply, you know, put your GoPro on there, screw it on so you could have one that's already in a case or in a naked case. And then on the bottom, that same pattern you'll find in the rear. So you could actually put a mount in the bottom facing backwards and you could have that rear shot. So if you're flying forwards, you could still have a GoPro angled going backwards, which gives you a lot of flexibility when you're when you're shooting and, and gives you some more options of how you'd like to shoot, which I think is pretty cool. So those are the main features. The overall look is, is pretty similar, but it has a few design tweaks just to, to look uh, with the new family of the QV Pro family. This what The one you see right here in front of me is the RTF version of it. So we offer this in the site right now today. This is ready to fly, already tuned put together, all you have to do is bind your radio, um, or if you buy the radio from us, we'll bind it for you even. So all you have to just turn it on. It makes it really simple. It has the Cadex Pro, uh, a Nebula Pro system in it. Really nice HD digital video. So that's the QV Micro Whoop. That's on the store today, right now, uh, at getfpv.com. So we have that in a kit form. We have that in a ready to fly version and a ready to fly bundle if you need the DJI goggles and radio too. We have, um, it also, all the spare parts will be available here in the next few days in case you needed an extra plate or anything else that spares, we'll make that available. So it's fully supported. It'll be supported for a long time through spare parts. It of course also features these really cool LiPo straps. I think this is one of my favorite parts of the frame. Uh, the elastic LiPo strap, that's a Kevlar strap that worked really well with those micro batteries. I think that was part of your idea, wasn't it, Phil? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I remembered like coming up with the idea and testing it with like some some hair zip tie, you know, some hair ties yeah, yeah. for my girlfriend. So we tried to like wrap them around to see if it's elastic to hold the battery. And then we came up with the idea and I really love it because it's so quick and simple to change the battery. You don't have to use the strap around and Velcro. So yeah, so I see in the comments, Johnny was asking if the, if the five inches already back ordered. Johnny, it's actually more like a pre-order, but yeah, we haven't had uh, stock yet. We're building them in the next uh, week or two. So for the micro whoop, we're building those right now. We have all the parts on hand and those are being built. They're probably going to be in stock later next week. If you put an order in today, it'll ship in one to two weeks, something like that. For the five inch that we'll show you here in a minute, that one is uh, a few more weeks out. We have some motors we're waiting on. Those should be here probably in the next one to two weeks. So we're going to take about a week to build them. So by the end of December is my goal to have the first batch of the five inch available. So yeah, it's a back order right now. We wanted to launch it right away along with the kits in case somebody knew they really wanted the RTF version, that, that, that it's an option that they didn't have to buy a kit if they wanted a ready to fly. So we made it available right now. Uh, so this is the two and a half inch. Let's move to the five inch because I think that's where a lot of the cool features that haven't existed before are, are now. And this is one where we put a lot of time and effort into and I'm really excited to show everybody. Zoom in yeah. a little bit out of my camera here. Maybe, maybe let's talk a little bit about the transition, how we came from from two and a half to yeah. a half inch to five inch. So be, we've been pretty happy with, sorry, we've been pretty happy, happy with this uh, setup here with the GoPro, <clears throat> but in most of our production, just the quality of the GoPro is not enough. So we need one a kind of a cine cinema camera, for example, here, the naked black magic or a full size black magic. So we came up with the idea, Hey, why not just scale the small one, you know, <laughs> two notches yeah. up. To make a, a five inch version to carry you know those heavy cameras it wasn't actually that easy that just to use this design and scale it up because it's just a little bit different with all the forces and you need to mount those heavy cameras up but right. we're super happy now to announce um that this is now officially uh, a part of the family and available to purchase and also like andy said we use the same high quality japanese carbon on here and it has so many cool design features and it actually took us over six months, you know, to finalize it and to make everything perfect for our needs. 
So we are quite happy. Yeah, I think to that point, I mean, this was designed, this is designed to be a professional product. So the quality is top notch. The carbon, I think you'll find is better than anything you've seen on the market today, at least anything I've seen in terms of multi-rotors like this. So it's, it's priced accordingly, but it's a really nice product. And if you're doing this professionally, I think you'll find it's well worth the cost of it. You're going to make a lot of money, you know, shooting those, those uh, commercials or whatever it would be movies. And this is a perfect tool for doing that type of, that type of work. What I was amazed when we first started talking about this project, Phil, that you guys, you're fitting these full-size cinema, like Blackmagic, Komodo cameras on this drone, which seems crazy. Like I was like, there's no way a five inch drone is going to lift like a two pound camera, right? I mean, how much do these things weigh? Like a kilo, kilo and a half or something, right? Yeah. I mean, this black magic is like one, one kilogram. So um, the challenge was actually to find the right motor and prop combo for it. Um, that's why we went out with um, also the Lumineer Cinequartz edition motors. They are 28 or 7, 1950 kV, and they seem pretty powerful because you have to imagine you're going to not freestyle like crazy with this one. It's not insanely fast but you can actually fly this indoor or through a window or whatever. And if you want to even put a notch up, we're going to work on this next. We're going to have also the naked black magic. So we took the whole housing apart and this is just like uh, three, 400 grams, what you're going to put on there, but you have the raw quality and you can also just easily exchange all these different cameras with our mounting options. Maybe Andy, you can show this a little bit on the closer camera where we have yeah. the, the inserts with the threads. Yeah, for sure. Let me yeah. bring that camera up. Yeah, let's go through some of the features. I mean, so this is a five inch frame that can carry full size cinema cameras. It, of course, can carry a GoPro as well, if that's what you choose to carry on. It, it does that like with with ease. If you're finding that, you could probably fly for a long time and it, it'll feel very powerful for a larger type uh, cinema camera. It can fly on a what, 16, 1500 mile battery, three minutes, something like that, depending, give or take, you know, depending on how you're flying. But for most of the shots that you're getting for that type of application, you usually need one or two minutes and that's enough. So it works really great for what it's designed to do in that case, where it's kind of like the maximum it can lift while still being five inch prop and, and closed and guarded. So you're going to be safe. You're not going to hurt somebody with this thing like you would if you didn't have prop uh, guards around it uh, and still get lift that high quality camera that that all the you know directors of photography are, are requiring for any kind of their shoots today. So let me bring in this camera here and get a little details of of some of the features here. So what Phil was referring to on the quick swap, kind of the nut there, um, is it something we custom made. It's essentially an aluminum thumb nut. Uh, so it allows you to take off by simply unscrewing. So we have a, a post that is embedded in the frame there. It's already got a nut in it. And so all you do is the screw is sitting there. It allows you to take this on and off. So you remove four of these thumb nuts and you can literally take off the entire camera plate that's on top here uh, in like um, less than a minute probably. So you can take off the whole plate, remove your camera. If you had another camera pre ready to go, say you had a black magic like Phil showed there and you want to switch to a Komodo or you want to switch to a GoPro, you can do that in literally minutes with the same frame with uh, the same camera plate. If you had a second one, you could just swap them out and put it on there. So you don't have to, you're not having to re-rig your whole camera every time and do all that extra work trying to strap it down with a million straps and stuff like that the other i mean you can see too the camera has a lot of different angles and straps and holes so it's very easy to strap down uh your cinema camera uh without you know having to really jerry rig it around all the carbon and stuff so it's designed in a nice way where it allows you to do that the camera kit the plate itself comes with super long lumineer straps the kevlar one so 500 millimeters it allows you to get completely around the camera that usually you'd have to use two straps to do it. So just a little added security from that. So the thumb nuts are one feature. The other thing that you'll see is just some of the integration of kind of the, the frame design. So you have the battery pad here in the back that's is embedded into the carbon. So these are, these are rubber that's kind of countersunk into uh, the carbon. It looks really nice. It, it provides a little bit of protection for your battery and, and a kind of a grippy surface so they don't slip around. We have the antenna uh mounts in the back that make it just a nice clean application for your antenna so in here we have a vista mounted uh in the front uh an extension cable going to the back and then the antenna mounted on the back so you we have two holes you could also have a full-size air unit and it allows for two antennas at the back xt60 mounted right here has a nice uh, specific spot that it mounts this connector uh panel connector actually comes with the kit so that's included 
Uh, so it's designed to be very clean. All you have to do is pull your battery in and out. You don't you really even need two hands to unplug it, which makes it nice. If you had a giant battery on here for some reason, you could simply just uh, take this out and route it like a normal cable out, a pigtail out the back. So it gives you lots of option. I think one word that comes to mind with this frame fill is it's like versatile, right? You can set it up for however you need it. If you need to do something a little bit different, this frame allows you to do that. So the ones, even the ones I've seen you guys use and other people that have had uh, prototypes, you know, they're all a little bit different because they're people tweaking them to fit their needs, which I think is really cool. And we've seen a few out there already with people doing custom 3D printed designs to hold their camera. I, I think what's awesome is it's, it's all the same base frame and it works. You know, they're making it work for exactly what they need. And this is a great starting, you know, solid platform that makes that possible. Yeah, exactly. And this was also our goal, you know, to have the ultimate ducted cinelifter form where you can like, because like on our jobs, it's like so different. One one DOP, you know, he likes the Komodo, the other ones wants to shoot real something real quick with the, with the GoPro. So you just, you know, put, you have your clean blade even on top, you remove the straps, you just simply put your GoPro mount on there and you fix your GoPro. So because everything needs to happen so fast on set because this is a professional tool because we're going to use it for professional work but uh, we just want to you know give the people the options you know to have one themselves because we're really happy with it and it's so easy with the workflow because if you have one step less to worry about you know i don't know to fiddle around with your batteries or it's not holding or change the camera and you need a screwdriver you know we try to eliminate all these points um, to be super quick and efficient. Yeah, I was looking through some of the comments. Thanks for everyone who's joining us live here. Excited to show you guys this and thanks for joining us live talking about it. We got Johnny Snipes on here. Tampa Bay Dave says, uh, looks pretty awesome. We're going to say, uh, what else we got? We got uh, Kay Anthony says, looks awesome. Thanks guys, man. Yeah, we're excited about this frame and hope some of you guys can pick it up, give it a try, find it to be a useful tool. Uh, in your arsenal for professional videography and, and filming with drones. Um, some other features to talk about with this frame, Phil, uh, it's both frames share the same style of design in terms of a pusher design. So the motors are mounted with the prop pushing downward. So this is actually the top of the frame. The motors are, are on this side. Um, I think there's a few benefits to that we found through testing uh, on the early days of prototyping. Uh, Clean air coming out the bottom with nothing blocking. It really improves performance. So you're going to get longer flight time, better performance, a little bit more power, better response compared to if it was the other way around flying this way where you have that, that air getting hit by all of these posts. Uh, the air travels much better coming on top, going down over and out clean than it does the other way around. So this is a really great configuration. And since it's a box design like this, you don't have to worry about landing on the motors or the props. You know, you just land right here. There's integrated little rubber feet <clears throat> that go onto the carbon that gives you just a little bit of standoff off the carbon. So you get a nice soft landing. You don't have to land right on the carbon and uh, it works really well. Uh, the other feature I would say too is your motors are mounted to what's the top plate, which we call the motor plate. If you look in this design, we actually have the, the flight controller is on the bottom plate. So there, the flight controller is separated from the motor plate. It is connected through the standoffs, but it gives it one more degree of separation that helps you with the tuning. Uh, it just makes it a little bit smoother, a little less vibration getting to the flight controller. And of course, if you choose to get the camera plate, this has uh, really high quality alpha gel uh, insert damp dampers. So this is uh, official, you know, alpha gel stuff. This stuff is really awesome. So this plate's completely isolated from the rest of the body uh, with alpha gel. So it's designed in, in mind. I think the other feature Phil to talk about is how this frame is backwards compatible with other mounts that are already on the market today. So if you would have a one of the Shen drones frames that's very popular for cinema and you already have some mounts for your cameras, uh, I would believe many, or if not all of those would fit right up to here. Is that right, Phil? Yeah, exactly. You can use the, the Komodo mount, the version one. You know, you can just simply undo this here and you have a different mounting pattern there. Also, you can use, I don't know if you're familiar with it, the uh, Naked Black Magic from Sam from the Le Pigeon. So you can put this on here or you can just simply go ahead, you know, if you want to go and create your own mount for your own needs. You know, you have all these options where you can mount it, you know, a little bit more in the back, a little bit more in the front, front however you, you feel like you need it for your needs. We try to be like as universal as possible 
and also since Andy was talking about the structure, as you can see, it's a, like a super slim and minimalistic design because this was our requirements, but at the same time, it needs to be as stiff as possible. So there's actually literally no flex, but this comes with this center core, what is inside here, um, which is another feature that we put in there. It's like a little core, maybe Andy you can show it for a second. Yeah, there's um, a lot the ice which, on the plates here. I can show. Yeah, which gives us this extra strength, strength in the in this uh, in the center, and also the arm design where the motor mounts. Yeah, and he's showing the core in the center. So this is the core uh, plate. It's carbon fiber, really rigid. But it, two of these run down the center along with yeah. the uh, the aluminum standoff. So yeah, yeah, that all combined, very very stiff frame, very very uh, very strong. Yeah, and also you have another benefit since all the electronics run in there. You know, you never have the issues that any wire comes out uh, inside the prop uh, line. And you can also mount some more things on the core if you want to. And also if you look at the motor mount, they look like super similar and um, super small. But actually they have a purpose that they are lined up here. Because in case of a crash, you crash on this edge here. Uh, all the force will go into this and you don't break your frame. That's why it's all structured here on that on that uh, outer line here. So mm -hmm. we want to make sure even if you if you touch something that you don't have your your drone need to be replaced or you have something broken, that's why it's super rigid. Yeah, maybe talk, I mean, people probably don't know the guy that helped design this. I mean, he's a professional designer for what, like Mercedes or something like that? Yeah, actually, Boris, he's also part of the Cinequads team. He yeah. is a professional designer, like Andy said already, at Mercedes concept cars. So he he builds all these crazy concept cars. And um, we gave him the idea and he came up with this awesome design. So we are pretty happy with it. Yeah, I bring that up just to say there's a lot of thought that goes behind this design. You know, you see you see these plates and they can kind of look, uh, it's hard to know all the thought that went behind them, but the patterns in here are there for a reason, you know, not only for weight savings, but for structural integrity. There's multiple points where you can mount all your equipment in here, so it makes it really easy. We can mount 30 by 30, 20 by 20, 25 by 25 even. You can mount your your stacks to here really easily. The, the Vista unit goes in there like no problem camera mounts in the front. You'll also notice the same geometry of this kind of triangular shape here. That's for that GoPro mount that we showed you earlier. That works on this frame. So it works on the base frame, stock, front and back as well. So uh, it, it's just universally a really well thought out frame, structurally really well thought out, very strong, very rigid, like Phil was showing you there earlier, you know, some of the stress points of how it would line up. And there's there was thought between every part of where it was put. There was no no design element that went, you know, untouched in terms of why it was there. Here's a quick size comparison because in the in the chat they're asking. So this is a two and a half, and this is the five inch, so it's kind of huge. But I mean, you need to fly your cinema camera on it. I don't know the black magic or the red, so that's why we need a little bit. But it's still relatively small, you know. Just imagine you're flying a red camera on top of it. I don't know where right. mine is, but. I mean, you guys probably saw the red Komodo. So if you put this on top there, it's just a flying camera. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's there's a there's two and a half inch. I can show you mine too. And then there's the five inch. So yeah. it's as you expect, it scales to about a five inch. The difference is the five inch has a much bigger body <coughs> in the center that supports the large camera. So it makes it a little bit bigger compared to a two and a half inch. That's only basically housing the electronics inside and then a GoPro on the nose. So you got the baby and the, and the big daddy. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just reading some comments here. Um, David is asking, what is the flight time? So this depends full on the camera you carry. So let's start with the, for example, you fly a GoPro and we just had a guy reaching out to us today and um, he was using an 1800 and he got like over 10 minutes of flight time because um, the motors are super efficient with us less weight. But then when you, for example, switch up to the naked uh, black magic, um, we typically use uh, one 1500, 50-50 uh, battery on top of here and we get three and a half minutes of flight and this includes some dives and stuff. So that's more freestyle. That's um, success, right? Yeah. So if we use um, 
for example, the full size Black Magic. I mean, this is already a heavier camera. Of course, you're gonna lose some flight time and performance. But uh, what we typically do, we're gonna put two um, fourteen hundred packs on the back. You know, also to counter balance the weight, and we still get two and a half to three minutes flight. And then the big boy, the Red Komodo. Uh, I mean. This is a, a brick, so you can imagine that it's a lot of weight, but it still flies great. Um, also, there we get around two minutes of flight time, which is usually enough, you know, to to get the shot or you know to 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 do what you want. So we are really happy because we didn't want to scale up this frame so much, um, you know, to put I don't know an X8 or bigger props or something like this, because you know. On, on our sets, they want to have shots they are not possible before, you know. So we need to fly through a car or through a window or whatever it is. And you don't need insanely power, you know, to do dives and stuff. Um, so that's why we went with the smallest form factor, which can still carry the weight of all these cameras. And it works pretty good. David, awesome. good that you am a GoPro guy. You have flight time till the moon. Uh, I see Lewis is asking, can 12 by 12 motor fit on the micro whoop? Yeah, it, it, it can. I'm not sure if this is going to focus on here. But um, basically, it's a slotted motor there. So it fits the 14s, and it also would fit a 12 on there, no problem. So you could still fit a 12 by 12 on there if you want to go to a, with a smaller motor. Um, that's no problem. Pretty cool. Thanks, everyone, for joining us again and helping us release this product. It's on Get a PVU right now. Let me bring up the site and show you guys. So if you were to search QV Pro or just go on our site and look under the new, new frames there, you'll see them. So we have this available in multiple versions. So we have the micro uh, right here is the micro kit, uh, 8499. Then we have the RTF version of it, fully built, tuned, test flown here at GetFPV. And then we also have a bundle version of it available if you need the goggles and radio. And it comes with some other stuff too, like batteries and chargers as optional. And then we have the, the full-size whoop, which is the five inch. Uh, that's available as a kit right here. And then we make that available as an RTF that will be uh, in stock later this month and also a bind and fly. Spare parts for all of these frames will be available. So it's gonna be fully supported. If you ever need to replace anything from a crash, we'll have those options. Uh, some of the frames are already showing up there and other, plate, other parts. The uh, camera plate we made optional since not everybody may need the isolation plate. Uh, but it's a really good uh, option if you want to put an HD camera on top of the full size, the five inch whoop. This one doesn't work for the micro whoop, of course, it's too big for it. But this comes with the alpha gel. It comes with the long straps, the hardware and two different foam wedges uh, to give you some options for angles to, to set your camera on. And I'm sure the community will start designing 3D prints and stuff for it that will make it f available for all the different cameras. But this thing looks so cool. I mean, you can see this shot here. Uh, with the black magic sitting on top of it. That's really, really cool shot, I thought. So what do you do, Phil? What, what, what is this? You, you've already been using this on set for a while. I mean, if you guys check out the release video, it's embedded in the product page, or if you just go to YouTube and search Cinequads, you'll see it. Uh, really cool shot. So I, I love the one where you're flying like from the ground up through the tree past the girl reading the book and then like through all the tree branches. And then that transition was so cool going yeah. from that to the tablet and then flying over the wall. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Actually we've been using it now for four months or something, you know, we've been using like all prototypes of it because we still want to, you know, figure out the, the concept of it, but <clears throat> we're super happy with it. It never let us down. It did all the shots we ever wanted to do with it. And uh, everyone was super stoked that you can fly like a huge cinema camera in this just really small form factor. So, um, and also safely, you know, because the propellers are protected. We used it on some, some action sports stuff already with a GoPro on top of it, you know, because there was just requirements. Okay, you can fly around, but the propellers need to be protected. Yeah, I think we are super happy with it. We are super stoked on the quality of the carbon because it's hard to tell this through YouTube and Facebook. But uh, once you have one in your hand or you see it in real life, I don't know, Andy, you saw it also the first time a few days ago. Um, it's yeah, you gotta impressive. you gotta feel it. I mean, even more than see it, like you can right away you just feel the difference of the of the finish and the the cut. It's just really nice, really nice carbon. No, there's like no dust or any residue on it. Like it feels just like 
like, I don't know how to describe it, finished. It's almost mm-hmm. soft, like to the touch because the edges are so smooth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, right. Someone's asking, you know, they're, they're, or they're saying they're, they're liking more of the guarded design versus a duct, which I know there's some options for ducts out there in this size, but I think many of the ones I've seen, the duct, you trade off, you add a lot of extra weight, first of all, so that all of a sudden you have like, hundreds of grams of just ducks that you add onto the design to try to guard the prop. And then secondly, a lot of times it actually doesn't even improve performance in terms of thrust, you know, it actually hinders it and they're loud, like crazy loud usually. So it's like screaming, which can be distracting. I can imagine on a set for an actor or anybody else you're flying around. If you have this like (laughs) ear piercing noise that's flying by your face, I mean, you've probably flown with some of those in the past. How would you compare it to, more of some of the ducted ones that would be carrying like a Komodo ca- uh, camera versus this one. How would you describe the differences? I feel it's, it's like night and day because it's like, I mean, of course you have maybe this, you know, certain airflow going down through the duct, but I still prefer this because this design is so open, you know, all the wind flues, flies fly right through there, like an, on, an, on a normal five inch or drone, or we also see this here huge on this one. If you notice, if you flew one with uh, ducts around it and you go low to the ground or you fly through something, you get always these turbulences, you know, and this like swimming around. And with this open designs, you don't have this anymore. It just flies on rails because all the wind and all the turbulences, if you come close to an object, you know, goes mm-hmm. right there. So you don't yeah, have Yeah, that's a good these... point. Especially when you have a big camera on there, it's already catching a lot of wind. You don't want your drone yeah. to add to that. So you, yeah. I mean, it sounds like it allows you to fly in more situations, maybe in higher wind, or even if it's low wind, it just flies better in general because you're not having to fight any outside force. And I think that's interesting. You saying flying low to the ground or through, you know, an opening where all of a sudden that turbulence would kind of buffet you one way or the other. That can sometimes ruin a shot where you know you're trying to track that straight shot and all of a sudden you have that little jiggle, right? That they have mm-hmm. to maybe work out in post or whatever it would be. But this frame you're saying doesn't do that, which I can see being a huge advantage from yeah, like a cinema it, it, professional level. Yeah, it's it's amazing because you can you're much much safer when flying around, you know, because you you cannot control these turbulences and it's shifting around from left to right. And also a good test. I don't know if you guys have already some of the two and a half inch. We included these little foam bumpers, which are nice, you know, if you need to be super safe. But if you just put them on and you fly it and you fly without them. You know, you can already tell the difference in performance. So it's super easy on this system because you can just remove them, you know, and if you need those extra safety, you clip them on there. But this already explains the, you know, the physics behind it that is way different. Yeah, the bumper there is more of a peace of mind safety added measure if you need it. If you don't, if somebody's not requiring you to have a fully like guarded front there or or back, definitely I would suggest fly without them. That's going to fly even better. Um, but if it's a requirement, we put them there cause it was an option that was very easy to add or remove. Like Phil said, you know, seconds, you could put them on, put them off. Um, and somebody may say, I, I really want that in there. You know, you'd be flying next to my face. I want a little bit extra protection. You say, okay, but if not, you want that, that top performance, just go ahead and take them off, fly without them. You're going to fly even better. And that's on the, on the micro warp. We have that as an option. Yeah. And if you guys lie after the stream, don't leave now go to YouTube and watch our uh, introduction video of the of the big guy here. You can actually see us flying with the red Komodo on top of it easily through our legs, you know, and I, you know how, how big that distance is. So that's super controllable. We didn't have to do 20 tr- tries to do that. It's super easy to fly through there. Yeah, yeah I, got, I got an idea, Phil. How about, well, I can put it on, I'll stream it, and then you can talk about it a little bit as we're watching the video. Does that sound good? Yeah, it sounds good. All right, hang on, let me me bring it up. (coughs) Close flying bumpers rule. What is that? Ram, don't rule. Ram says, yeah, he likes flying bumpers. Cool, man. Let's see, where is this right here? There it is. There we go. Shot at the beginning. Yeah, here we showed all the 
uh, different mounting options on it. Here's with the black magic and the red, of course. Where, Where was this shoot? Nice. That looked really cool. Yeah, yeah, we did some some follow shots with Shaggy FPV from the Dutch drone gods. Here was yeah. the, the red flying through those little gaps there. And yes, you can see we we un flying through the legs there with the red. Uh, <laughs> You can actually see that we left all the the clips unstabilized, but you can see how smooth they already are, you know, without any stabilization. So that's kind of wild too, wow. and especially on a small and low. That's your favorite shot, right? Yeah, that was a cool one. Right here, it transitions to the top. That was cool. Yeah, and also here you can see, you know, how it's like performing, you know, with the dives or flying close to people <laughs> through a car. That was actually a super scary shot for them. Um, but just imagine flying a, ca a cinema camera through an open window is pretty wild. And also you can see here in the studio how it performs, you know, and all the shots are not stabilized on purpose because we want to show you guys how smooth they are already out of camera. And um, yeah, we're pretty stoked showing here all the different cameras on it. And it's just wild to have like so many cameras on one single platform. Yeah, normally you'd have to like have a custom design for every camera. You know? That's what we're yeah. used to. So that's, it's cool that it can be so versatile and yeah. do so many different and cameras. Here, here on the last shot was just a little freestyle with the GoPro on top of it because it's like super fast with it. So yeah, we were pretty <laughs> stoked. Have you, have you flown with it back to back from like a big camera and then a GoPro? Right yeah, after because the field? Yeah, we, we shot all this in one day. So we transitioned from GoPro to red. So it was like, oh my God, that's fast. You know, <laughs> the red tomato on top of it, you know, it's like <laughs> yeah, a bit but more whooping quick. around. Yeah. But it's also nice that we have this, this found out this right uh, motor and prop size combo, you know, so mm -hmm. that you can easily switch with all these different cameras and they all um, still fly fine. You know, doesn't matter if you put a GoPro on top of it or uh, a red Komodo. Yeah, it's, I would say it's a perfect match for this frame design, the weight, you know, uh, on a normal, like if you had a five inch freestyle drone and you had a 2807 motor, it would be kind of crazy. Like that motor is way too big for a five inch prop. But when you're, you were kind of basically putting a big engine in a small car, so, so you have a lot of power in a five inch setup and, uh, at the right KV with the right voltage of a 6S battery, it just is kind of a sweet spot to be able to have that much lift and thrust, but still be in a relatively small package. So you're not having to fly an eight or nine inch prop. You know, this allows you to fly through a window or through your legs, like you said, where if you took, you know, a Cine lifter, like an X8, eight inch, there's no way you're going to fly that through a car window, right? You're going to destroy either the quad or somebody. Yeah. So this just allows you as a cinematographer or a filmmaker, this is a tool in your tool bag. If you want to get a shot that you can still carry a full size cinema camera, it allows you to do those creative type of shots that you wouldn't get, you know, on a fixed camera or a tripod or whatever like that. You, you really actually have a flying drone to do it. And it's customizable, you know, as, as hobbyists and professionals that many of you are, you know, sky's the limit in terms of what you want to do to make that frame work for you. It's a, it's a good starting point, very solid design, and then you can modify it, add parts to it, 3D print, you know, mounts, whatever it would be, but it's a great way to get started. So I'd highly, highly recommend it if you're wanting to do anything professional within FPV and cinema with drones. This is a really good platform and something I think is a must have for anybody in their arsenal, you know, and start with the, you have the micro what for the really small stuff. This is the kind of the medium size for carrying GoPro to cinema style cameras. And then that supports the, even the bigger ones that like an X8 or the, the ones that are carrying really big, really big gear. Yeah. And also I'm just picking up on the comments. Will is saying there's no mount for the set cam. I mean, we, we try to like make it as universal and to mount any popular camera, systems already or mounting systems already out there but that's why we came up also with the clean plate and you can just we included some foam pits so you can strap any camera down for now um, but you all, we also saw guys using the gh5 already with some 3d prints i'm pretty sure once you guys have this in your hand you come up with the wildest idea but we could not just match any single camera out there because i mean there's so many cameras and stuff out there that's why we try to be as 
universal and as many options as we can fit into a small frame like this so you we can i'm pretty sure you we can mount any camera on there yeah and that's why i think it's so cool about this community too it's a community of makers <laughs> so now that we we've released this frame you know i expect as more people get it in their hands there'll be more people modifying it and making like 3d prints or other designs available that will will be accessories for this frame that you've seen similar on uh, other frames in the past so I would expect that here too. You know, if, if there's a new camera that gets released in six months and that's what everyone ends up using, you know, we'll, we'll probably make something available or I'm sure the community will do the same thing even probably faster than we can. So this is a good platform that I think a lot of people will will uh, tweak it and modify it and make it make it their their go-to platform for, for cinema. Well, thank you for everyone joining us. Thank you too, Phil, for joining. I know it's late over there in Germany. Got to let you get yeah, some it's almost, rest. almost midnight. So. <laughs> Time to yeah, go to bed now. Appreciate it, man. But we this is live. Everyone launched right now. Just yesterday, today, we kind of announced it officially. Uh, this is the QV Pro Whoop. This is the QV Pro Micro Whoop. Two and a half inch, five inch. Both are in the store today at GetFPV. These are from Lumineer. And uh, these are the Cinequad edition. We got help with Phil and his team on the design, all the feedback, testing on this thing. Really couldn't do it without their input. So thank you so much, Phil, for doing that. Go check them out and get a PV.com. They're available in kit form, ready to fly form, bundle form. We'll have all the spare parts for accessories and stuff up on the site here shortly too. Uh, if you're in the US, we, we, we ship to there. We ship worldwide if you're outside the US. If you have a dealer that you really want to go through that you're outside the U.S., let them know that you want them to carry this and they can reach out to get FPV. We do distribute and wholesale this frame as well. So I know some dealers already in Europe and Asia have placed orders, so they should be showing up in those stores shortly as well. So take a look, check them out. Thanks for thanks for hanging out with us, Phil, and everybody on the live stream. We'll, uh, we'll get back to work and uh, see you again soon. Yeah, since we have more exciting projects to come, but we... Yeah, this is this one be the last. Shortly, but uh, <laughs> we have more exciting stuff in the future. So, yeah. Thanks, so guys, for watching. Thank you, Andy, for our nice cooperation and work together from Germany yeah. to the US over China. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. We'll see you later. Yeah. Bye.